morning everybody this is Jean here Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for you I hope you've having a lovely weekend we did we've actually had company over the weekend um, our friend Roger who is deaf visiting us from England he has come I believe you've met Roger before um, and the, the thing is um, I was working on, I was going to be working on my Carpenter Star backing but I, we put actually Roger in my fabric room um, with a nice little chair convertible to a bed and he's right everything is on the, my ironing station so that is that's being put on hold because I have to iron my carpenter star backing right is right here that was one of my last videos but also one of my last videos um, real quick not not again to be <laughs> <laughs> purveyor of doom but um the the poor people who are were in florida with that unprecedented flooding and that included our our dear son um and his home down in florida um we thought it was okay but um they have a swimming pool that had just been um hardscaped all around it um and renewed and he went to um, drain the mucky black water not fully because when you drain a pool um, it's not you can't drain it all the way you have to be very careful he was draining it just slightly and because the ground water table was very high his in-ground pool popped out and broke up all the hardscaping it is a disaster I'll put a picture up this poor boy these uh, I'm telling you our poor son and daughter-in-law um, he's very stoic and is a true love and we'll just get on with it. He, I said one step at a time. He said, that's what I do, mom. <laughs> one step at a time. <laughs> It'll get sorted out, but it's just a mess because it was an Airbnb and he's had to obviously, um, cancel reservations and whatever. Um, so just a little, a little thought for our dear boy and all of the people who are suffering down there much worse than, than our boy. Anyway, that's that. Um, I keep thinking about him and keeping him in our prayers and we're just so worried about him, but that's okay. Just material things. Anyway, um, because I'm not working on my carpenter star and I had given a little hint as to what my, uh, just a small project will be is I'm going to be showing you how I have uh, made a handkerchief quilt. Now I had shown many um, videos ago how I had used vintage hankies or the hankies that your mom or grandma or auntie had or thrift store buys um, into a quilt. Now I'm not going to be showing you how to do a quilt but I am going to be showing you how I actually take a vintage hanky which can be very thin and very fragile and how I stabilize it and I'm going to, I think, just be making, say, a little pillow. That's all. Now, I, I will be explaining along the way how you could just be sewing these blocks together if you had, say, 20 hankies into a quilt that is like uh, four blocks across, five rows down. if you're collecting hankies or if you have some beautiful little works of art they're just so pretty i have been collecting them now these are not my mom's hankies but i think if you've seen in my other room and two rooms ago i had a, a, a hat box full of vintage hankies um over the years i had been collecting them my mom's are put aside um and i did already make a quilt with some of hers but these have, have if you can see have come almost straight out of a um a thrift store now is it, it's very interesting, as I was saying before, you could get hankies from these for like 50 cents 
or a, or, a, or a pack of them for a dollar. Now people are very clever because as I was saying, they're little beautiful works of art in themselves. Now these are from like the 40s or the 50s and people are selling these now for like five dollars a piece. <laughs> So if you go to a yard sale or an estate sale or a, a, a flea market or something and you see a box of vintage linens, snap it up. I'm telling you, they're beautiful. They're just beautiful, lovely works of art. I'm just going to show you a few of these. Now, quite a few of them, as you can see, are very, very sheer and obviously need to be backed and or stabilized and I would think obviously maybe it's not obvious to some but you wouldn't want to be having something like this that you would make perhaps if you made a quilt as an everyday item you're not going to be wanting to wash these every week you know a utilitarian quilt obviously because they're just such lovely beautiful works of art now I have some here these are the blues this is a beautiful teal now they're all basically the same size give or take an inch or two here is a pretty blue one I do like that actually very beautiful there is a right and a wrong side you have to sometimes have to look at it where the rolled hem would be but either even way yeah that's the this is the correct side here beautiful but as you can see they're fairly thin not really meant for um, fabric fabric now here's a beautiful one. Oh, this is so pretty the green maybe i'll use that which one is the proper side this is the, that's the proper side look at that lovely little work of art to get a bit of yardage like that almost like a fat quarter <laughs> would be several dollars so i guess actually it's not a very well actually like five bucks or something on etsy plus shipping I don't know. Um, here's some, oh, here's some like more um, holiday themed with the points, poinsettias. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. Let me just see where that, yeah, the lovely little basket. Aren't they so beautiful? Pardon me if I'm, if I'm boring you. Now, this is really fragile. As you can see, look at that. That is incredibly thin and fragile. Um, I do like that one. Let me just see this one. I think at one point I had sort of uh, arranged these. Yeah, I did. Because all of these point set is, but boy, is that thin. That is why you need inter uh, interfacing. Now, oh, here's a pretty one. Look at these lovely, lovely hankies. I hope I'm not boring you. Oh, they're so pretty. I do love that one. I love that one with, oh, of course I love it. It has the red hearts, right? <laughs> Oh, here's a real pretty one. I'll probably use this one. <laughs> You're saying she's probably going to use that one. Oh, look how pretty. Oh, I, it's either that one. I do love that one. I haven't looked at these in ages. Let me see. Oh, here's a pretty lavender one. Let me see here. Oh, it's so delicate. But man, that is see-through. That is see-through. So what you're going to be needing, if, if pardon me while I peruse my collection here. <laughs> They're just so pretty. I haven't watched, seen them in a while. Look. Oh, so pretty. Um, what you're going to be needing is a, I got it out here. It's a new packet. This is a Pellon. Um, I think it's lightweight. I thought I had lightweight. Pellon interfacing. PLF. Oh, I think that's what it is. PLF 36 in this country, in America, fusible interfacing. Ah. Yes, yeah. Because this is such a delicate, this is what I, this is what I'm using here. Let me just show you. <laughs> you tell I never rehearse. Oh, gee, this is a mess. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> ah, fuse, uh, oh, yes. Okay. Now this is what I'm using, and it says on the back here, fusible interfacing, ultra light weight for light to medium weight fabrics. Pellon PLF 36 fusible interfacing is an ultra lightweight interfacing for light to medium weight fabric. It's great for wovens, knits, blouses. It's excellent for use with crepe de chine, voile, and handkerchief linen fabrics. It can also be used for stabilization of quilting projects and it gives you the uh, um, application. Okay, this is, oh yeah, this is a very, very lightweight, as you can see. 
extremely lightweight now the fusible has as you know we've worked with this before it has the glue little like glue dots little nubbly on one so side I this and i will be fusing it and then i will be um actually stitching it onto a piece of uh, another piece of fabric to really stabilize it and i actually might put that little three layer sandwich onto yet another piece but i will i will continue with that let me just try to pick oh that's so pretty try to pick out one of the hankies that I'm going to use. I really don't know which I'm going to use here. It's either, I love this one. <clears throat> well, I love these three. So for our, my bed, maybe this one. Maybe that one for our bed. This one. And this is, the, it, this is the proper side. You're looking at that. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I think that's so beautiful. So pretty and delicate and feminine. So I'm gonna pre I'm gonna show you next what I do with this lovely little hanky, and I think I'm gonna be making a lovely pillow out of it. I'm over at my little ironing table here, um, and as you know, it's a black and white stripe. So I just put a hunk of uh, white fabric down um, because it was I I was seeing all of the the black and white stripes. Now, when you have these vintage hankies and they've been folded maybe for decades. They will have, a lot of them have a fold line right there. But I'm not bothered about that. But the thing that sometimes that can happen is because they are so old and, and however they were made, sometimes they're not absolutely square. Well, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's the beauty of it. As you can see, what I was telling you about, some, so many of them have like these beautiful, tiny little rolled edges. And as I was actually putting the, uh, my little tiny iron which it is on a lower setting, I'm actually sh sh um, finding that this is a really scalloped edged little handkerchief here. Do you see that? Now that doesn't bother me in the least. I don't have to have any fancy stitches when I'm going to go to iron, uh, sew this on my, my fabric. I, I'm not bothered about that at all. I'll just sort of follow that along just like that and I will just sort of applique this onto my um my pillow backing but one I'll, I'll come to that soon but you will actually notice that sometimes they're a little bit of a wonky shape now you probably can't i'm looking through this through the viewfinder you probably can't see this but it's a little bit bigger up off this edge corner here that is absolutely fine just as much as i can with my hands i'm going to try to make it as square as i can that's all that's all and then that that maybe you can't see it but there's a real definite crease i'm so not bothered about that i'll try to get it out as best i can this one i'm very pleased there's only a tiny 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 little um stain up here that's okay i know these were fresh this is a maybe a 50 year old stain ah oh, it's so pretty isn't it beautiful 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 so, so i'm at my cutting table here what i've done is i've taken this out of the package my lightweight interfacing and with the glue side up okay the knobbly side up i'm just going to lay my let me just see where the the uh this is oh yeah you have to be really careful because look how they're printed that's the proper side and yet you look at that and that oh wait a second oh no 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 you can almost tell by the weave that this is the um wrong side so i'm going to be putting the wrong side of my hanky the wrong side of my hanky down to the gluey side of my stabilizer it's very very lightweight but it's awesome for the job now i will be <clears throat> just not putting the stabilizer right to the very end because it has scallops i'm just going to i'm just going to lay that down as, as you see i've made it as square as, as i can and then well, i'm going to cut it so my interfacing is just slightly slightly smaller than my hanky you can't see that whatsoever because it's because it's so lightweight but even then that gives it a, just a little bit more um, substantial feeling now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm just going to very very carefully with a pressing cloth on top of the whole kit and caboodle I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I'm just going to put a pressing cloth on on this part here and very very carefully with my iron I'm going to press to melt that glue down to my down to my the the, uh, the fabric here so you probably can't see it but I have actually just stabilized with the interfacing my lovely 
um, hanky here on the on the um, back side, and I, I wish you could feel it. It's it's still very thin. You can still see my um, my cutting mat grid behind it, but it is a bit more substantial, but not substantial enough. Now again, as I say, this is not going to be a you know a bed pillow. You're not going to be using it. It's decorative, but you still want it to be substantial to last. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a a ruffle, a pretty ruffle around the edge of my pillow here to make it even more girly and pretty. I have yet to decide what fabric I'm going to use, but right now it's important that if you're going to be making a cushion, you're going to be needing, let me just pull this back here, you're going to be needing a pillow form, okay? Now this is, a, I believe this is an 18 inch, yeah, this is an 18 inch pillow form that you can get in this country here. And what I want to do is it all dependent on my next step here of how I'm going to be um, backing, let me pull this back again here, how I'm going to be backing my hanky onto my backing fabric so it actually fits my pillow form, okay? Now I like to make my, well I'll, I'll come to that, I like to make my pillows really uh, a slightly bit smaller so that the pillow is really really filling, the pillow form is really really filling my pillow, but enough for the, uh, the, that now. But I do know my pillow form is about 18 inches, okay? So I'm going to put that aside, but what I'm going to do now is I have this fairly, it's a muslin, but it's a fairly substantially woven muslin here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and press it. See if I get a nice area exactly here. Exactly the size, or again, just slightly smaller than my hanky here. Oops, right here. Let me just see. Get that in the frame here. So I'm going to. I'm just going to cut this piece of muslin, just one. Again, just slightly smaller than my hanky. So now I have three layers. I have my hanky, my inner facing, and then my muslin. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut my backing, which I quite like. It's okay that it's a muslin. It's a nice quality muslin here. I'm going to cut that a little bit bigger than my 18 inches. Say I'm going to cut it, I'm going to cut this about a 20 inch square, just to be on the safe side. Now here. what I've done is I've taken my three very thin layers, my hanky, my inner facing, and my piece of muslin, and I have centered it, as you can see, on my, my, my cushion fabric, actually. And even though this is a little bit thin, when it comes, when it, when it's put onto the pillow form, the cushion form, with my ruffle around it, you, it'll be so pretty. It'll just be pretty. The majority of it, the cushion, Again, let me put this up. The majority of the cushion will be the, the ruffle around the side and my hanky, obviously. Now, what I've done is I have put my pins, as you can see here, I have put my pins in this way with the head here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and yeah, I'm not bothered that these are all little tiny scallops, which most of these lovely little works of art will be. You'll have scallops or something. I'm not bothered. I'm just as, as close as possible to the scallops, even probably just in a little bit of a straight curve of just with my regular machine. A smaller stitch, just a little bit of a smaller stitch with my white thread as usual. I'm just going to sort of applique this around the edges onto my um, onto my backing fabric here. So as you can see I'm just using my white thread and just just like with a sort of a just guiding my fabric along like that. Not not worrying too much about the scallops. I'm just stitching this down, a little bit of a smaller stitch. Not pulling anything. Now either I am or I am not catching the uh, third layer of muslin, but that's okay because I'm going to actually be doing a small bit of quilting on this to stabilize the entire um, uh, hanky and to actually enhance just a little bit, a uh, little bit of free motion, but you could just do it in a little bit of a grid if you wanted. 
but it, it could be a, a nice little project to just do a little tiny bit of free motion quilting. Just, I'm not pulling anything. I'm letting the pins do their work. This corner, I'll just turn like that. And as you can see, it's not perfect. It's more of a, 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 you know, I'm not catching the scallops, but it looks fine and you will never be able to notice it. I have stitched my hanky all interfaced onto my, what will be my cushion fabric here. But as you can see, for the next video, I'm going to show you how I choose my fabric for my ruffle and how I'm going to finish my pretty cushion. But for you folks here who have just wanted to know how to make, maybe make a, a small quilt right there, maybe not this size, but right here is a, is a quilt block. Okay. Now you've cut your back wrap, backing fabric. This is 20 inches. Now that's maybe a little bit too big for a, a, a quilt that block that you would, you would want. So now at this point, you could have just stabilized this onto an 18 inch or maybe even just, you know, just, ex just a little bit bigger than your hanky. But you have to remember if you do have say 20 hankies that you're wanting to make a quilt, you're wanting to go by the largest hanky that you have because not all hankies are the same size. So if you start cutting out your backing to say, if you want to make a quilt, at you know 16 inches or because your 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 uh, hanky is 14 inch square or something and then all of a sudden you you have a bigger hanky you want a little bit of um just for uniformity a little bit of fabric around if you're going to be making a quilt just so it looks right even even if your the smallest hanky is much smaller you still have that showing right there obviously you don't have to do it on black i mean on white you could have done it on black you could have done it on muslin you could have done it on a print whatever you're backing i'm just showing you this um for plain sake here this is what i'm doing so i am going to be putting a ruffle around um i'm not quite sure what fabric but that will be in the next video but again th this is a quilt block it is stabilized even if you don't know free motion quilting, if you want to put a, um, after you have your, all of your blocks, say, or if you just have three across and three down for a lovely little, um, like a memory quilt, um, you could have a little bit of sashing, maybe a little cornerstone in the, in the middle, in the, each corner there. Um, it's just a lovely way to preserve these lovely little works of art. I think it's lovely. And I, I ha as I said, I've made many, I've done them folded like a butterfly, um, but I can, that, that is substantial right there. That is really substantial. My quilt, my hanky's not going to um, fray. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'm, you, you can't see, but I've just done a little like, yeah, yeah, yeah. With my regular foot, I've gone slow and I've just appliqued that around, even though it's a scallop. So that's the beginning of my lovely little hanky pillow. But again, if you just wanted to continue on doing this, making your quilt blocks, as it were, a little bit smaller, a bit bigger, stick them together and you have a lovely hanky quilt, lovely heirloom. Oh, so pretty. So follow me for the next video, folks, and I will be finishing up my lovely pillow. Thanks so much. All right. See you. Bye.